Good morning. How are you today? Happy Wednesday. Yeah, I think it's Wednesday. Hump day, right? Hump day. All right. Mm, yeah. Triple chocolate coffee with uh, that uh, peppermint extract added to it. I'm becoming kind of fond of that stuff. So, yeah, that's that's pretty good. So, anyhow, uh, I've uh, I was thinking this morning about that fifteen dollar an hour deal. You know, I know it's probably a serious subject that I probably shouldn't breach because I like to kind of keep this light and funny, but. You know, I was thinking about that. Uh, I know there's times when I've, I've made more than that and, uh, in, in my life. But, you know, sometimes when they say, when you're, when you're a trucker, okay, and they say they're paying you this much, you're actually getting this much. So, yeah. If you figure out the amount of hours that you put in, you know what I mean? Uh, I think I was making about 24 an hour for that contract mail carrier. You know, uh, that's that's what they, they, uh, they told you. I mean, uh, but uh, anyhow, that was team driving. So you were on that truck and then... And there, if you ever go to work for <coughs> somebody that's got four fuel tanks on each truck, you're not stopping much, you know. So, <laughs> but the, you know, they didn't count the hours that you were in the sleeper or anything. That was off time, but it, it's not off time like, you know, the kids, they're, they work in town at the factory. And, uh, both of them, and uh, that's uh, at the glass plant in town. And uh, anyhow, you know when when they're making, and, and I don't know exactly what they're making, but they're doing pretty pretty good. You know, uh, I know that their their paychecks are are pretty darn good. You know, and, uh, uh, anyhow, when they're off, you know, when their shift's over, they can go home and then that's their time. I mean, they got to sleep and stuff, but, but they can do other things. But when you're team driving, you know, you're on that truck, you know. I mean, there's another guy driving. You're not on duty, but but still, you can't go eat a snack anywhere. You can't uh, you can't go drink a cup of coffee anywhere. You know, not something as simple as that. I mean, you can't can't go to a movie. On your off time, you're 10 hours off, you know, 10 hours. And, uh, yeah, 10 hours of sleeper time, and then it's back to driving, you know. So your time kind of rotates around the clock, too, which is kind of hard on a person as they get older, you know. And, and I've read studies that that's hard on young guys, too. So, so actually, if you take... All the time that you're on duty, that about $24 an hour probably averaged out to, you know, a lot less if you would figure it out that way. And there's, they figure your driving time, that's what you get paid for, point A to B. Of course, those schedules are real tight, so. But, you know, when you stopped and fueled it up, they didn't figure that as driving time. You weren't getting paid for that. You know, you got to do that. I mean, even with four fuel tanks, you're you're going to stop. Uh -huh. It's going to take at least, it seems to take at least a half hour to fuel the truck up and stuff. 
So, and, and you got to, of course, inspect the truck every time you do it and stuff. That's, that's procedure. Sorry. Uh, but, uh, anyhow, you know, none of that counts towards your pay. And none of the sleeper time, none of the time that you spend hooking up a trailer and unhooking and waiting for your trailers to get loaded and stuff. You get paid for any of that, you know. You know they just figured the driving time, you know. And, and, and uh, so, you know, that sounds good. And, and the paychecks were pretty good. But, you know, if, if you figured out how much of your life you're spending there, you know. That's, you're not getting that $15 an hour that they're wanting for working at burger joints and stuff. And, uh, all the last years of my working life, I worked, uh, local, I worked for a huge farmer, you know, farmed, you know, a lot of acres, Kind of varied between fourteen and eighteen thousand acres a year, you know, because the rental properties you you gain some and lose some, and you know, I mean, there's always there's some change there, you know, but that's a lot of acres to cover, a lot of acres, and uh, you know, I I didn't get paid uh, fifteen dollars an hour by the big giant farmer. And, uh, I've heard that some of the other drivers were getting more, more than $15 an hour, but, you know, I was always kind of sucking hind tit, so, you know, but, uh, the thing of it was, I, I stayed there because I wanted to be around home, you know, I was tired of being gone all the time, and I was getting older, and, and the team driving was real hard on, on a guy with my health problems, you know, because you couldn't eat right and, and you couldn't maintain a regular schedule. And and when you're diabetic and, and then I developed heart problems, it, it's uh, it's pretty important to to do those things. And it was impossible to do on a, on that team truck. You know, you just couldn't do it. Uh any food you wanted, you better have right there on the truck and stuff. It, it's because, uh, you know, to make the schedule, you, you're not stopping. You, you can't pull over at a restaurant and enjoy a nice leisurely lunch or dinner or breakfast or anything, you know. Sometimes, you know, I, I used to buy them packaged boiled eggs. And sometimes that was breakfast, you know. I mean... Of course, breakfast could be two in the morning, you know. I mean, it's your schedule, you know, and it screws your body up. And I kind of got to figuring that that, that team driving stuff was going to kill me, you know. So, you know, that's, you know. <laughs> and so, that's why I was happy working for way less pay, actually. I mean, but I put in a lot of hours for that farmer, too. We, you know, a short day was 10 hours. And, of course, I didn't get overtime because he's a farmer and he can get away with that, too. If you figure up, you know, what I made per paycheck and stuff, I, I'm thinking that when I was only making, you know, $7 an hour years ago, driving a dump truck, I think uh, that uh, my paychecks probably averaged more than for, you know, well, I was making 14 an hour for the big giant farmer. So that was twice what I was making running a dump truck, but they paid overtime. And, uh, of course, you put in a lot of hours in a dump truck, but it was a traveling asphalt plant. And, uh, anyhow, there again, you were gone. And I lived in a camper nine months out of the year and traveled around and, and, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, by Wednesday at noon every week, I was on overtime. And then 
you get on them federal jobs and, and that's when it really added up because the federal job had a standard of how much per hour they paid you and, and it was it was quite a bit more than the seven dollars an hour. So then when you got on that overtime when you were on federal jobs and then whoo boy that added up. I mean I had some I made good money running a dump truck. Like I say, I put in 80, 90 hours a week. You know, it's a lot of, lot of time. Of course, I'd put in probably, you know, when we weren't harvesting for the big farmer, it was between 50, 60 hours a week. A lot of the time, I mean, not all the time because, you know, he had a, he had this little tendency to, to send me home, you know, and, and, uh, and put some other, you know, one of the other guys working for him in my truck so I can get anything, you know, there'd be like two, three weeks in a row. He'd do that and he'd call me up and say, yeah, well, you know, there's no work this week, you know, we're, there's just not nothing moving no no grain or fertilizer moving and then of course you know i've lived around here all my life and people around here knew you know me and and they would see my truck going without me and they would call me up and say hey hey i i saw your truck going but that wasn't you driving it I said, well, you know, that's kind of funny because, you know, the boss says there's no work. But, you know, so he just lied right to me, you know. And he had a habit of doing that. And, and what was really funny about the whole situation was that that red, uh, red Peterbilt, every time he put somebody else in it, it'd break down. You know, like the truck said, I'm not going. Uh -uh. If Randy's not driving it, I'm not, you know, that. And so, you know, this went out, that went out. <laughs> and, uh, oh, you know, I mean, that truck just not, did not seem to break down when I was behind the wheel. But uh, one guy blew the engine up and, and you know. There was uh, all kind of things that went wrong with that truck when I wasn't driving it, but one of them other guys was. But uh, anyhow, I, I knew he was lying to me. I knew every time because somebody would call me, you know. Somebody would call me. And I know one morning uh, I had to take my wife to the doctor in Des Moines and, and I headed down I-80 and and it was one of them weeks that, oh, we don't have any any freight to haul, nothing to haul. And, and I'm going down 80 that morning, and I look over there. I'm thinking it was a van meter exit, and there sat my truck on the on-ramp. Broke down, you know, as I was on the way to Des Moines, and I'm going, ha, yeah, there you go. There's another another lie, you know. So, like I say, I was always kind of sucking hind tit there, but, you know, I, I did put up with it because it was a job. It was a job, and, and, uh, and you know, I was local, which I got, got to be home a lot more, you know, and, uh, which that's, to me, I wanted to be, with my family, especially as my kids got older and were about to get out of school, you know, that was important to me. So I was willing to work for less than that $15 an hour. And, uh, you know, there's another thing was I was a farmer and I was always something deep inside of me that, that, uh, was satisfied by helping with harvest and stuff. You know what I mean? Cause you know, I, we, that's that seemed important to me but you know i don't know it, it's uh 
I guess, all what you want to do in life. But here I was, you know. I, I had a lot of trucking experience, and I could make far more, far, far more, you know, going over the road. And I could have walked into any trucking company back then, as long as I could pass that physical. And because I had experience and I had a real good driving record and because I could drive those ungoverned trucks and govern myself because you're just out there too much to, uh, you know, be a cowboy, you know, and be speeding down the road real fast. And even though the trucks were, were fast, you know, you could really go if you wanted to, but. I know, I, I think the last three times the DOT stopped me, I was doing under 55, you know. Uh, there was a woman, there's a woman DOT officer that everybody was always scared of. And, uh, and I was always told, oh, if that woman stops you, you're, you're in for art, you know. You're going to get, be raped by tickets and stuff. She's going to find Anything she can just to give you tickets. And, you know, uh, I think I was doing 54 mile an hour going down Highway 92, hauling a load of grain to Des Moines there one morning. And, and there she sat there on the shoulder. And I rolled by her at, at like 54 mile an hour. I, I wasn't out there to burn up the road. I was doing a job. And, and, uh, so I didn't want, didn't want to go getting speeding tickets all the time. Like some of the other guys I knew, you know, well, they get speeding ticket and a speeding ticket. And I guess if you get three of those speeding tickets that are under 65 a year here in Iowa, you know, the ones under 65 don't count, but if you get three of them, then that counts as one speeding ticket where you're going exceeding 65 in a 55. That's the way that the good old state of Iowa has of, of collecting those fines in, in, and uh, not seeming to hurt you, you know what I mean. Because that stupid 55 mile an hour speed limit is, uh, they when they put that on national, Nixon did that, you know. That's one of the things I didn't like about Nixon, but... But uh, he did that, and uh, he put that on nationally. And then when that came off, it should have actually reverted back to what the speed limit was before, but it didn't. Don't ask me. You used to be able to drive. Well, you know, the speed limit for cars in Iowa before that was 70 mile an hour on these two-lane roads. And... It was 60 at night, and truck speed limit was 65, and I suppose it was 60 at night. I don't remember I was driving a car back when it was that speed limit, but I wasn't driving a truck. When I started driving over the road, it was all 55, you know. Everywhere. Everywhere was 55. So, you know, and uh, anyhow, you know, I, I rolled by that woman DOT officer at 54, and then here she comes. I look in the mirror, and there she is, you know, lights flashing, and I pull over. And, and we had a good conversation. She seemed like a real nice gal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it was... Uh, I know my boss, the big giant farmer, you know, I always got a kick because I'd tell him, you know, I'd got stopped by the DOT and, and, uh, of course I, I generally didn't get a ticket or even a warning from most of them because I was doing everything above board and right. And I wasn't burning the road up, you know, or nothing. And he started calling me the DOT whisperer. So, <laughs> Well, you know, they're just people too, and they're out there trying to do their job, which, you know, people can understand, but, 
but uh, yeah. But anyway, I was talking to the woman there beside the road, DOT officer that had such a draconian reputation from everybody that always told me, and and you know we got along fine, you know, and she looked at all my my license and my papers, you know my tickets for the the load of grain and stuff i think i was hauling for an elevator so uh anyhow everything was above board and i wasn't burning the road up when i went by her and she inspected my truck and it was okay so you know heck i then she said well you can go on and i didn't get a ticket i didn't get a warning ticket a lot of this i think hinges on your attitude and what you were doing when they stopped you, you know. If I'd have been going 70 down the road in this 55 mile an hour zone, I'm sure I would have got a ticket, maybe more than one, you know, because you know, they're pretty good at finding stuff wrong. That's their job. That's what they're trained to do. But, uh, you know, I was, like I say, I was only doing 54, which is a mile under the speed limit. I wasn't even running the 60 mile an hour that, that a lot of guys would run, you know, or they think they would get away with 65. But me, I, I kind of made it a policy to generally run about 58 or, or under, you know, depending on, oh, you know, you got to adjust for weather conditions. And, and if I was just in a, kind of a slow mood then you know i'd just hang around 55 as close as i could if it was a little under that's okay you know it really you know these runs like from these small towns to des moines and you know really didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference if you burned up the road or if you drove around the speed limit you know most of the time you you'd end up at the same place in line with the other trucks that were hauling from there. The one the guys that burnt the road up and endangered their selves getting a ticket. And those guys, I knew uh, a lot of them that would end up, well, they'd say, if I get one more ticket, I'm going to lose my license. And, and, well, pretty soon they'd have another ticket because they wouldn't learn. And guess what? Then they're going to driving school, you know. And like I say, it just wasn't worth it. You were out there all the time. You're exposed. You're going to get caught sooner or later, you know. So anyhow, that I guess that's not really directly related to that $15 an hour thing. But I wasn't making $15 an hour. But uh, anyhow... You know, like I say, there's times in my life I've made over that, but then if you figure out how many hours you put in, then you're not really making that at all, are you? You know, <laughs> but I'm not sure if, if places like McDonald's, I think for what they charge for that food anymore, they could probably afford to pay the $15, you know. They might not be able to remodel as often or something. It seems like they do that pretty regular, too, and spend a lot of money doing stuff like that. But, uh, you know, for the quality of the food and, you know, what you get for your dollar, it's like, it's really not a bargain, you know. I mean, heck, there's a lot of places where you can go get a lot better food for the same money. Yeah, that's real food and not some of this, whatever they call that pink, pink meat, you know, that's been washed with noxious chemicals and stuff. I read about that. And yeah, I don't know. I kind of avoid McDonald's. I kind of drive right on by it and go someplace where I can uh, get real food. You know, it's, it's uh, like I say, usually doesn't cost any more. You know, and you get more food, and it's it's a lot better. But uh, anyhow, <laughs> I tend to get way off subject, you know, and 
And, uh, but I drive by all these places and you see the big sign that we're paying $15 an hour starting pay and up. And, and you wonder how come a lot of them are closed and stuff, didn't they? Short hours and stuff. I don't know what happened to all the people that working, you know, that say there's some big labor shortage and don't know. Don't know. I'm, I'm baffles me. Of course, I'm not an expert at it. You know, I kind of think this deal that the governor's thinking up about shortening unemployment from 26 to 16 weeks doesn't sound like, like a very good deal. You know, I was on unemployment uh, twice. Well, no, not actually. Yeah, well, during the construction company, you got laid off regular. And that's all part of, our, of, of construction. But I generally got a job in the winter time, So I guess I really didn't draw much unemployment when I worked there. You know, if I was working there now, I would. I'd just take the whole winter off because... But I was a lot more ambitious back then. I wanted to go, go, go. I'd get me another job. You know, I delivered oil all over southern Iowa one winter. You know, it's, it's, you know, and, and of course, I figured I was making more than what if I was drawing unemployment. But, and then that, these people, you know, I wasn't making, wasn't making what uh, I would make at the construction company, you know. I mean, that oil job was, they were paying you like a set salary, and it was 20000 a year. Well, you know, I could make that or more in, a, in nine months for the construction company, and that's what they didn't understand when I went to quit that spring to go back to a dump truck was, well, you know, I can make more driving a dump truck you know that's just made a lot more money you know but uh and you put in a lot of hours delivering oil too anytime you get in a truck you're gonna put in a lot of hours you might as well figure on that you know but you and, and but the the oil job it did i did have weekends off i mean from friday night to uh from Friday night to uh, 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 Monday morning, it was it was my time. It was my time, but the construction company that I worked for, they 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 said when I went to work there, yeah, they said uh, we only put in half a day on Saturday. So, <laughs> but uh, you know. Their half a day was you'd get there at four thirty in the morning and you wouldn't get off till about five o'clock in the afternoon. So, you know, their half a day was actually more than a a full day if you were working at some factory or something eight hours a day. You know, so <laughs> but that was their half a day. Of course, you were on overtime all that time, so you got paid for it. You know, that that, that pay looked pretty good too. But, uh, anyhow, that was before I went over the road, even that, that dump truck stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I mean, uh, well, I guess, you know, I, I, I got laid off from the dump truck and I, I went back to this factory. I'd tried factory work before the dump truck and, and, uh, of course, I was working construction, doing other stuff then before I started driving the dump truck. And I had one job driving those big six-cylinder four-wheel drive, six-cylinder diesel four-wheel drive forklifts, you know, building apartment buildings and stuff. And you could lift pallets up to the third floor with that thing. Pallets of plywood, real heavy stuff, you know, no problem, you know, and of course, I was making, 
making seven dollars an hour then at this construction company you know i don't well come winter then of course i i i went to work at uh got a factory down down you know a town 20 miles away and, and minimum wage was like 325 an hour then or something and, and that's what they paid starting out and uh but you know it was warm in there all winter and i didn't have to be outside so that's that's actually was appealing i worked construction where i was working all winter and you're out in the cold and uh, so that appealed to me but you know you go from seven bucks an hour and then overtime to to uh three i think no it was 335 an hour then 335 335 an hour you know and you didn't get any overtime i mean you put in your eight hours and went home five days a week and, and uh that would get you your 40 hours but uh anyhow that that uh they they couldn't understand and and i was you know a lot younger then and they had the pay schedule posted on the wall and i'd be in my 40s before i made seven dollars an hour there uh i guess they pay a lot more now but uh things have changed but uh but you know, spring came and, and I didn't really care for the factory work at all. You know, standing there in one spot, welding, weld, 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 spot welding, you know, not, 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 not big skill, you know, I mean, then on this line where you're there all day looking at the same people, the same things, scenery never changes. And, uh, anyhow, that did not appeal to me and they couldn't understand why i was leaving in that spring well i could walk onto any construction site and make seven dollars an hour and up and get overtime if we went over you know so economically for me it didn't make good sense to stay you know and bring home that little piddling amount i mean i was used to way more money than that and i had a family to support and you know, well, I just had the one son and the wife then, but, you know, it was just wasn't economically feasible for me to stay, and I was able-bodied and didn't mind being out working construction. So, I was off, you know, but anyhow, I got out of the dump truck and and they were hiring down at that factory again. And uh, and I thought, well, I'll go work there this winter. And, and, you know, we'll see what spring comes. And I'll be out of there again. And I went down there. And, and, you know, they put me on this line. doing the, Putting these plastic parts together. It wasn't no big deal. And uh, there was another guy there that I knew and uh, didn't know him real well. You know, he was older than me, you know, about my parents' age. And uh, anyhow, but he, I did know him. But uh, anyhow, I was on the line with him. And by golly, you know, here we are, part, partly through the day, the first day, you know, and I'm making piddly money there you know piddly money piddly and uh anyhow the this old woman that was working on the line she brings these parts down and slams them on the table beside us and goes on and on about how this this isn't the way you do it just chewing us out like mad and i'm going going to this other guy you know she walks away and i said is, is she some kind of boss or you know just 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 you know why do we got to put up with this you know i mean if you can't be civil shut up you know i mean come on 
Yeah. And, and she was just screaming and yelling and going on. And it's like, gee, many Christmas. You know, man, what in the heck is going on? And anyway, I told him, he says, no, she's not a boss. She's just kind of that way. And I, I, I said, you know, they don't pay us enough here to put up with listening to stuff like that from co-workers and I'm just not gonna do it and I told him what I was making on the dump truck you know and you know what he said to me was that nobody makes that much money is what he told me you know and I just happened to have a pay stub there in my billfold from my last check which was quite substantial because you know I mean, we were on a federal job, and, and so, you know, that overtime really added up. And, and uh, you know, they were taking more in taxes, way more in taxes out of my paycheck than what we were making in that factory, you know, for a week's pay. You know, we, we were not going to even make close to what I was paying in taxes, you know. And so, anyway, when he tells me, he tells me that nobody makes that much money, I took that pay stub out and I showed it to him. And I said, yes, I make that much money in a truck, you know, a dump truck. It's not even a semi. Just going back and forth hauling asphalt or rock or whatever, you know. And uh, sand sometimes. You know, we'd haul materials into the plant and then we'd haul the finished product out and put it in the paver and spread it out, you know, pave the road. That was our job. You know, and, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of betting that he was never happy with his pay after that because he found out that, yes, people do make that much. And, you know, there's a lot of people that made more than what I was making, you know. There's people that do quite well, you know. Yeah, and, and but that pay in the dump truck was not not anything to to scoff about because it, you know, it, it even at seven dollars an hour, which doesn't sound like much these days, but you know that was good money by the time you add up eighty, ninety hours and all the overtime and stuff. And then you get on the federal job, and that jumped up. It seemed like it was about ten dollars an hour. You know, it was you know right around that, which you know back in those days was pretty princely sum per hour. And then the overtime really kicked you up. You know. It had to be more than ten dollars because it was about seventeen dollars an hour I was getting on time and a half. So, you know, so it was it was good for them days, substantial. I mean, you figure eighty ninety hours a, a week at that, and you're getting some money. But they, like I say, the more you made, the more they took out in taxes too. So that piddly amount that they were in the factory paying you, you know. Like I said, I I couldn't even pay the, the taxes that came out of my check at the dump truck with what I was making down there a week. So, you know, <laughs> that that, that kind of, the pay is relative to how long you work. And I, I haven't had a whole lot of jobs in my life that, that I'd put in 40 hours. Uh, most of the stuff I've done, you know, is... Probably, you know, 60 to 90 hours a week was what I was doing, you know. I mean, you, you truck driver, your normal week, 70 hours if you're on the log book, you know, a week. That's 70 hours, you know. I don't know. I don't know about all this pay stuff. But anyhow, I suppose I've been yammering on for about 40 minutes and, and I never did really cover exactly what I started out to do, but that's not 
unusual for me and there's a lot of people that ain't gonna you know watch this whole thing all through but if you do thanks for watching and and, and i hope that some of you got a little laugh out of some of it because i kind of like to keep things on the lighter side and not be so gloomy and serious because i just don't like being gloomy and serious you know all right thanks for watching Bye.